Howdy folks, welcome back to Steampunk Desperado channel. This is a place for all things sci-fi and fantasy, with a great emphasis on that most wonderful subgenre, steampunk. Today, our topic is steampunk, retro, afro, futurism. Yes, I did say funk, not punk, and it's funk as in the music of the late, great James Brown. I first mentioned this topic a year or so ago in my video called, Is Steampunk Political? And the term was first coined by the writer Balagun Otratade, who complained that steampunk glorified the colonialist racist past and that, and that ignored the, the problems of people of color. He called it the great steampunk lie. I dispute that because you can only cover so much. And quite fact, quite frankly, a lot of steampunk does talk about the negatives of the Victorian era. But in any case, I strongly said yes. Yes, please write more steampunk. Please bring it, bring your viewpoints. We really want that. We want to see that. And uh, we want to see those fresh viewpoints. And so today, I'm going to talk about some of those fresh viewpoints and some of those uh, black written, some of that stories written by blacks and about blacks in the steampunk vein. And uh, before we get started, I want to talk about another one of my own works. I've published some short stories in, in a few anthologies, uh, in particular, a couple by a fellow named George Donnelly, who edited these and wrote some of his own stories. And this particular story is called a Valiant He Endured, with kind of a libertarian theme. And, uh, and it's, uh, my story is called Ghost Raider. It's a little bit about conspiracies and conspiracies. I think if you check it out, uh, I think you'll like it. It's available on, on ebook form on Amazon. I'll, and I don't know if it's still available in printed form. I, I, do have, I do have my own copy of it, printed form. So uh, check it out. I'll put the URL there. Now, shall we get started with Steampunk? First book is one that I've talked about before when I reviewed my favorite alternate histories. This one is called The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead published in 2016 by Doubleday. This book won a Pulitzer Prize. And probably because it, you know, covered some of these uh, history of slavery and that sort of uh, that sort of thing. I mean, it is a great book, too, but I'm sure that it didn't hurt that it, that it uh, had covered this. This is an alternate history in which the Underground Railroad, hopefully you weren't falling asleep in history class and you know what that was, but uh, in which the Underground Railroad pre-Civil War was an actual railroad that actually had tracks and tunnels underground. And uh, this would be a, a, a cool idea for a magical realism if Whitehead hadn't added a lot of other steampunkish alt-history ideas. In this book, the protagonists Cora and Caesar, two slaves from a really brutal plantation down in Georgia, escape and get onto the railroad. And uh, they escape into South Carolina. And in this universe, the different states decided to handle slavery in different ways. South Carolina has freed their slaves, but Cora and Caesar soon find there's something sinister going on in this kind of eugenics program. <laughs> uh, and uh, so they decide to move on, although Caesar gets, Caesar gets captured by a Georgia slave hunter, which is kind of a downer. Um, but Cora moves on to North Carolina, big mistake. Because North Carolina has also abolished slavery, but they've also expelled all their blacks on pain of death. And they brought in Irish, free Irish workers to, to pick the cotton. And so she has to struggle to get free. Um, you know, she's her goal is this free black settlement in Indiana. So there's a lot of adventure, a lot of uh, uh, tragedy, um, and some heartwarming stuff in there. But uh, it's definitely definitely worth. I'd say four and a half gears. Um, very, very good story. So it's a little brutal. And I and recently Amazon made it into a miniseries, which I have not seen, and I understand that is rather brutal as well. So be advised <laughs> if you intend to watch it. Next one is a is a book I saw while researching my steampunk politics video, and uh, it's called Pimp My Airship by Maurice Broadus. Uh, 2019 Apex Book Company. 
Now I had to get this book with a title like that. Pretty awesome. And uh, it was a very interesting tale taking place in a steampunk version of Minneapolis. In some undetermined time, it's kind of like a little bit later in time where things are a little backward. A lot of steampunk's like that. And the characters are Sleepy, who's like a stoner poet. He kind of, uh, I think he works for the government, and he, otherwise he's kind of, uh, he's kind of a uh, layabout. And they, he meets this dude, this radical firebrand, who calls himself, get ready for it, 120 Degrees of Knowledge Allah. Uh, apologies to the Muslims out there. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, and I don't know why it's 120 and not 360. I have no idea. I guess he only goes a third of the way around the cir circle. And they have to rescue this heiress, Safina Jefferson, whose father's been killed by evildoers. And they basically face off against the city's white-run political establishment, who is, of course, brutal and corrupt. <laughs> uh, so some of the characters are like, uh, like, uh, likable, like Sleepy, really like him. Uh, knowledge Allah, he's kind of annoying. <laughs> Maybe he's meant to be. The biggest disappointment is the fact that the airship only appears at the very end of the book. No! I wanted the airship to be this whole focus. But, what, do you, what can you do? The next work is a, is a short story by the famous N.K. Jemisin. It's called The Effluent Engine, and it um, appeared in the Mammoth Book of Steampunk, edited by uh, Sean Wallace, uh, 2012, Constable and Robinson Limited. Jemisin is as won several Hugo Awards, and this is the only stuff I've read by her so far. I was a little bit biased because she has complained that the, that the science fiction world is racist, which to me is ludicrous. Um, but anyway, uh, in this book it involves, of course, black protagonists uh, fighting evil whites. <laughs> and uh, in this case we had uh, uh, Haiti is like this utopian society, and they've got this invention, the effluent engine, which is supposed to um, produce fuel out of the detritus of, of sugar cane. And uh, these evil whites have stolen it and are going to, uh, you know, misuse it. And uh, this black secret agent, a woman, um, basically she hooks up with this uh, white, well, white and black, it's mixed race, girl who's kind of been oppressed by her brother, and they become lovers, because of course it's that kind of story, and uh, and uh, although it was okay, well written, I, I just found it heavy handed, especially the idea that Haiti in the 1800s would have same sex marriage, <laughs> just, I just don't see it. <laughs> but, you know, I suppose maybe she figured turnabout was fair play, that she's going to idealize Haiti, you know, where some steampunk writers idealize Victorian Britain. Okay, fair enough. Next story, moving on to something I liked a lot better, The Black God's Drums by P. Jelly Clark, uh, from, published by Tor 2018. This was an Alex Award winner. Uh, I found this in Tor's catalog when I was looking for steampunk titles in it. Interestingly enough, most of the recent ones, or a lot of the recent ones, were by black authors. And uh, it was uh, something... I was initially hesitant because of my disappointment with those last two works, but I decided to decided to try, and I was glad I did. Uh, the, interesting enough, the plot's reminiscent of Effluent Engine, but it's done right. In this case, we have a young orphan girl, um, a young black orphan girl, um, in the free city of New Orleans. We have an independent confederacy, we have a, a union, and New Orleans is, is independent and neutral, where a lot of you know escaped slaves go, etc. And, uh, and this young girl, she's a pickpocket, and she's also possessed by an African goddess of storms. And uh, she encounters this brave female airship pilot, another thing that you see a lot in steampunk. And uh, she's from the Free Isles of the Caribbean. And she says, take me with you. But, of course, the airship pilot has this mission, which is to recover a secret weapon made by the Haitians. And this secret weapon is kind of magical weather weapon. And, and uh, it to me it worked better because you think of Haiti, you think of magic, you think of voodoo, you think of 
of African gods, and, and the Clark incorporates all this stuff. And my only complaint was this book, this book was way too short. It's barely a novella. And I really wanted it to be longer. I love these characters. And uh, he also includes a sample chapter for his following book, A Master of Jinn, meaning genies. And it's a steampunk that takes place in Egypt. And it's, it was pretty awesome, too, the part that I read. I will definitely read the next. Now, just all this Haitian stuff, a brief aside. Uh, for a little bit more background on Haiti, not only would the French try to take them over again after their independence, but they were politically divided. A lot of people don't know that. Back in college, I was assigned a uh, play to read called The Tragedy of King Christophe by Amy Césaire, written in 1963. I advise you to check out Christophe was a Haitian general who declared himself king and of the northern half, and it was kind of a tragic, a tragic story. He wanted to bring his people to greatness. So if you want to understand Haiti a little bit better, I definitely, I definitely advise you to read this. Very, very interesting. And it, I think it shows a little bit of why Haiti never became uh, the prosperous nation it should have been with all its resources. Um, next, another alternate history. This one, not involving Haiti. <laughs> um, or New Orleans. Uh, this one's called Everfair by Nisi Shaw also published by Tor 2016. And again, I was not disappointed. This was a really great book. It's an alternate history involving the Belgian Congo. Now, if you've, if you've heard any of my rants about colonialism, I, it bothers me that uh, the people go, say that colonialism was all evil, that, that Europeans did nothing but exploit the third worlders, when in fact, uh, they often, especially the British, they would build railroads, they would found schools and hospitals, and they brought a lot to the colonies. And that, in fact, I think they made it possible for India to become a modern nation. Um, but there was an exception, definitely an exception, where colonialism was all downside, and that was the Belgian Congo. Uh, it ruled as the personal property of King Leopold of Belgium. And in this, in this alternate history, uh, a group of people conspire to free from the yoke, free um, the Congo from the yoke of Leopold's tyranny. It includes Fabian socialists from England, uh, um, good well-meaning white guys, basically, a group of African American immigrants, uh, think like Liberia, they're, they're out to found their own colony, and also a visionary native king. And they all fight Leopold and they to make this country of Everfair which is a, a fun Victorian name, kind of ironic, considering it's a rainforest, so the weather's probably not that often fair. Uh, um, but I love it because there's complex characters of all races, and they, they cooperate, but also they have their conflicts, including you know, between the, um, especially the, the king, and uh, he doesn't much like the Amer African-American colonists. And... Uh, they have the dilemma of deciding what to do about World War I, whether who to, who to fight for, whether to stay neutral. And they also have there's some interesting uh, sexual relationships, considering the Fabians uh, advocated free love. <laughs> so you have a little bit of a, of a love triangle in there. It's kind of interesting. Uh, five gears. Absolutely five gears. Now we get to the man who started this thing, Balogun Ojotade and his anthology, Steam Funk, with an exclamation point. And also Milton Davis. They were the editors. This was published in 2013. Fifteen stories. I only recently found out about this. I didn't realize he he probably wrote the article as good publicity for this anthology. And so, it's like a, like a lot of anthologies by multiple authors. It's very uneven. Some are very good. Some are, eh. You know, including... Um, I'll have to talk about the uh, editor's stories, of course. Milton Davis, his story was called The Delivery, and I thought it was very strident. It involved evil, bigoted Southerners who kidnapped this, um, this wealthy black woman and uh, a robot invented by George Washington Carver who has to rescue him. I thought it was a little, just too much. Uh, just you know, too much 
like, oh, whites are bad. And uh, Aljitati's story, which appears at the end, um, Davis's appears at the beginning, Aljitati's appears at the end, it's called Rite of Passage, Blood and Iron. It involves the legendary black hero John Henry, remember the Steel Dragon Man? And uh, Peter Pan. And uh, it was interesting, kind of violent, and it didn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's go along and view some of the other stories I found particularly noteworthy. First of all, P. Jelly Clark's in it, and I was thinking, awesome, love his work. I was quite disappointed because Clark's story, Men in Black, was also pretty strident. It involved the Tulsa race riots of 1921, and uh, that's been dramatized a lot lately, particularly in the series of The Watchmen. And, and it's kind of, it's almost being portrayed as a genocide. It was a basically a very short-lived race war, and that, um, yeah, the blacks lost. They got driven out of the uh, Tulsa area, and uh, uh, people died on both sides, um, and it was very tragic. But um, in this story, it's, it's kind of a genocide, and this black scientist comes back through time trying to prevent it. Um, and as a lot of time travel stories, things kind of go awry. So you can see very much from 2013 to 20, when was it, 2018? Uh, yes. In those five years, I think, I think Clark's writing really matured, and uh, you can really see how much better the black guy's drums and uh, the, the story about the gin are. My first of my two favorite stories is The Lion Hunters by Josh Reynolds. It involves lion hunting in steampunk Kenya. And it, it, it's got a young man, he's a Maasai warrior, and he has to kill his first lion to be considered a true adult in the tribe. And uh, he's worried because he has a mechanical heart. You know, he had a, a congenitally weak heart, and he's worried that his heart's going to burst as he's hunting, and, and uh, some interesting things happen, and he kind of redeemed himself. He's, he's, he's a, um, it's a kind of a coming-of-age story, very heroic and, and inspiring. Uh, the other one that I thought was very touching was Once a Spider by McFarland Kyle, and this is an enjoyable tale about, and it's mostly magical, and there's not all that much steampunk in it, except it's kind of set in that milieu, but it's uh, about a elderly woman, elderly African woman, she's a weird spider. <laughs> she's a weird spider and she has uh, given up her hunting of humans at night and instead she helps people and uh, of, of all races <laughs> and uh, the people are, it's kind of a very diverse city that she lives in and she battles with weird tigers and uh, allies with weird wolves. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple others that, that are, are noteworthy, um, that are some of them which I think had a lot of potential. I, I, got, I, have, to, I have to mention, oh yeah, The Refuge by Kochava Green. And uh, this was pretty good. Not my favorite, but pretty good. It involves warrior pagan nuns. <laughs> living in, in the American Southwest in this kind of very strange, there's these kind of almost Lovecraftian monsters that they have to battle. Uh, so that was was fun. I think it, I, I don't know, I think it could have been tightened up a little bit, but definitely enjoyed it. Another one that was cool was The Path of the Ironclad Bison by Penelope Flynn. And here's a, here's a story that should be a novel, first of all, and second of all, the pacing was very uneven. It started out kind of slow. It involves a black couple who are leaving Baltimore to seek work in San Francisco. And, and like they're, she's an engineer and he's an airship pilot, or maybe it's vice versa. And uh, their travails, it takes they take way too long to get out of Baltimore. And then on the prairie, it's pretty interesting. And then they encounter the Sioux Indians. Uh, I guess I should say the Lakota Native Americans who are building airships and uh, I love the concepts it's just that that part should have been a lot longer and more involved and uh, could, should have gone on for quite a bit longer so who knows I who knows maybe she made it into a into a book that would be that would be wonderful unfortunately I don't really have time to go through all the rest of them uh, 
definitely, uh, definitely good and bad. I mean, bad is bad meaning disappointing. None of them terrible. I probably even it out at about four gears. My conclusion is that the steampunk movement has been a really good thing in uh, in bringing black writers and characters to steampunk. Uh, and I hope that helped promote reading among young people because it's really not as popular, especially among boys and men, as it should be. Uh, on the other hand, I think some of the criticism, by, in particular by Balogun Ojitade and by a lot of other people with kind of a leftist viewpoint, uh, has kind of hurt the steampunk movement, as I detail in my uh, video, Is Steampunk Political? And uh, that... Uh, well, let me say that creativity is not a zero-sum game. If you, if you um, basically depopularize, if you disincentivize white steampunk writers who are already popular, you reduce the chances of black writers, uh, steampunk writers, to become popular um, on their coattails. And uh, so I, I think it was kind of a an unfortunate thing. Uh, some of this. Uh, colonialism bad type of themes. So, in the future, I think steampunk's going to come back, and I, I wish nothing but good to all of these writers, and hope wish them great success. This has been my review of several works of black, African American, and perhaps otherwise, uh, steampunk fiction, um, including Balakan Ojitade's uh, anthology Steam Funk. And uh, please comment below and uh, please like and subscribe so we can help get out the good steampunk word. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.